Hey guys, welcome to this two-part tutorial on a exploding kaleidoscope. In this first section, we're going to be looking at how to do a procedural kaleidoscope pattern. You can see the result here. Really simple setup, but we can get some great results really quickly. So let's jump right into it. All right, got my empty scene here. First thing we're going to do is drop down a geo container, dive inside, drop down a circle. This is our kaleidoscope disc. Um, the next thing we're going to do is make this um, into an arc. So we want to switch the type to polygon, crank up the divisions, uh, change the arc type to closed, and lower the arc angle to something like 20. So you can see I've got a single segment here. What we're going to do is um, we're simply just going to apply a noise or pattern to this segment, and then we're going to copy it around. Uh, to complete the disk again, and that's how we're going to build our kaleidoscope setup. So the next thing we're going to do is drop down a remesh, just to get some more geometry. If you um, use Shift W with your mouse over the viewport, uh, you'll be able to uh, visualize the wireframe of um, your mesh. That's useful because we want to be able to see how much uh, geometry we have to work with here. So. Um, in our remesh, we're going to change the target size to something quite small, like 005. You can see at the bottom it's cooking. We'll just wait for that to finish. All right, got a lot more points to work with now, so we can turn off wireframe. Um, the next thing we're going to do is uh, drop down an atrib noise. And this is just going to be a temporary um, placeholder for um, the color noise that we're going to add later on. So if we drop down the element size, something a bit smaller, so you can see what we're doing. So that's our noise. Um, the next thing we're going to do is use a copy transform to copy the segment around. Um, you could probably do this manually. Um, however, in Houdini, it's almost always a good idea to try and make your setups as procedural as possible. Um, so we are going to copy this arc angle, copy parameter, Go back to our copy and transform node, and here we're going to paste relative references. That's procedural. Um, the next thing to make procedural would be the total numbers. That's really easy to calculate. That would just be 360 divided by this arc angle value here. There we go. That is a not very pretty, but very simple kaleidoscope setup. You can see if we move the offset and the noise, how it's working. Probably a good idea to go back to the copy and transform and enable pack an instance. That's just going to make the playback a lot faster and more efficient. So um, one of the main reasons why this doesn't look very good is because these segments aren't mirrored at all. The pattern is just repeated uh, around in a circle and it's very obvious. Um, so a very easy way of um, helping improve this setup would be to, um, before our copy and transform, we're just going to mirror our segment down in the Y plane here, putting one in the Y to get something like that. So we've got a mirrored segment. And then if we go back to our copy, we can see this is going around one too many times because we've essentially doubled our arc angle length. So we are simply going to double our arc angle length in here. And there you have it. It's already looking a lot better However, like I said, this is just a placeholder, this ad trip noise. Um, so uh, it would be a good idea now to swap that out with a more interesting method of creating procedural colors and patterns that gives us more control. And a really good way of doing this is using VOPs. So if we disable that and then drop down a ad trip VOP. There we go. And dive inside. So inside our Atrib VOP, we're then going to apply some noises. So the noise I'm going to choose to use is a turbulent noise to begin with. If you look in this noise section, you can see all the different noises you can work with. You can play around with these. I'm just going to show you the ones that I use to end up with that result you saw at the beginning. Um, it's almost always a good idea to noise up your position pass first before passing it into then a second noise. It doesn't have to be different, but it's almost always a good idea to try and 
um, layer up your noises in Houdini to try and get the best result possible or just more interesting results. So I'm going to also add an add here. That's because I'm going to pipe in our position, which gives us the position of each point. And then we're also going to pipe that into the position input of our turbulent noise. And then in our turbulent noise, you can see at the moment, this is blue, and that's referring to the fact that this is outputting as a float value. However, position is obviously a vector, uh, which is represented by green. So you can see in the signature here in our turbulent noise, we're going to switch it to a 3D noise, and you can see that switches to green. So we're then going to pipe that into the second input of the add. So this is essentially noising up our position, and then we're going to put that output into the position of our second noise, which here is a unified noise static. And then finally, our noise output can then go into CD, which is color. So not much going on really, it's kind of boring at the moment. However, we can um, improve this very quickly just by changing a few values in our noises. So the first one I'm gonna play with is the turbulent noise. I'm gonna to switch to sparse convolution, maybe increase the frequency, something a bit higher. And then also maybe the amplitude is something a bit higher as well. Beginning to see some things coming through. Um, however, we can definitely improve that playing with our unified noise static. Noise type, I'm going to use Whirly Cellular. There we go. Um, and I'm also going to enable the fractal as well. So we get some more detailed patterns. So already this is way more interesting than that default attrib noise that we had. And we have way more control, we can keep playing with this uh, for a really long time. Like I said, you guys can keep layering up different noises or use your own noises or just simply switch through these different noise types to end up with different results. Um, I'm going to stick with this. And finally, I'm just going to increase the amplitude because at the moment we're just getting very dark greys and we want to see a bit more contrast in our noise. So this is our black and white output. We want to add some colours to this. So a good way of doing that would be to remap this 0 to 1 black and white attribute ramp to um, our own colours of choice. And we can do that using a ramp parameter just before we bind the attribute to our CD channel. So that's our ramp. By default, it's affecting the colour. Um, don't be fooled by this. Um, this is something People always um, try and use to play with the ramp and as you can see that's not doing anything and that's because this is our ramp default um, because once you put down a ramp parameter inside an attrib vop it automatically promotes the ramp controls to a higher level which you can see is here if you go up outside of the vop which is good because it means we don't have to keep diving inside and we can go back and promote a few other um, parameters as well to prevent us having to keep going in and out. Um, so for example, in our unified noise static, we're going to promote by clicking the middle mouse and letting go on promote parameter. You can see this is now promoted so that we can play with the offset um, higher up. And you can see in a minute why I'm going to do that. So going back up, we're going to play with our noise. So you can pick whatever colors you want. I'm going to put down some blues couple blues, uh, maybe a slightly brighter blue here, and a red here. So the more colours you add, obviously the more interesting it's going to get. Maybe get some slightly tighter colours in there. A bit more bunching. All right. Let's say I'm happy with that. The next thing would be to try and animate it over time, which at the moment isn't happening, and that's because nothing is changing. Um, if we play this offset, you can see now why I've promoted it. If we start playing with it, you can see that it's now moving. But we want to do this procedurally, so a really easy way of doing that would be to use the global time attribute, which is $t for time. Hit enter, and then if we go back over here, uh, we want to enable real time so that it plays back in real time and hit play. At the moment that's really fast so we're just going to go back to this offset and we're going to multiply the time by a small number and hit play again. And there you have it. That is a 
very quick way of getting a kaleidoscope effect set up in Houdini. Like I said, you can keep playing with this. Something which um, I know worked quite well for me was using a, another VOP node called Modulo, which essentially takes the modulus of this 0 to 1 ramp. So if we were to decrease this, we get even more interesting patterns. Alright, thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next part.